Hello, this is Tim DeLeon from Focus First, and this short tutorial is a quick overview of the visual pricing system. Now, I'm going to be doing this tutorial on a Mac, but it works basically the same as on a PC. If there's any differences, I'll be sure to point them out. Once you have the visual pricing system open, all you have to do is press the Start Here button, and that will allow you to read in the file that you've exported. But before you do that, let me point out a couple things I want to make sure you're aware of. First of all, if you need a reminder on how to export data from your MLS, all you have to do is select this link. It will take you to the Exporting Data Instructions page. From there, you can find your MLS and see instructions on how to export your data. If you're interested in viewing additional online tutorials, this will take you to the tutorial page. By the way, all these tutorials are also available on YouTube, and you can easily find them along with other visual pricing videos by going to YouTube and searching for the visual pricing system. Now let's briefly discuss the difference between PCs and the Mac version of the visual pricing system. The key difference is where the menu items are located on the PC versus where they are on the Mac. To get access to the Focus First menu items on the PC, go to the top menu items and select the add-in menu. Once you select the add-in menu, you'll see there's a Focus First drop-down right below there. If you click on Focus First, all the Focus First menu items will appear. To get access to the Focus First menu items on the Mac, position your cursor over this bold blue box. Once you do that, you'll see a pop-up. That will tell you that the menu items can be seen by using the right mouse click. Once you do that, you can see all the Focus First menu items will appear. Okay, so now let's read in an export file. Again, to do that, all we need to do is to select the Start Here button and read in that file. Now, the first time you run the visual pricing system, it will ask you to select your MLS. So find your MLS on this list and then select it. We're going to select some data from Northern Colorado. So if you check this box below, it won't ask you to select your MLS again. If you do select this box, you can always reset that choice later and have it ask you for your MLS. This is really useful for situations where you're using more than one MLS. For this situation, I'll select the box so I won't have to answer this question again. Now that I've selected my MLS, that choice is shown up here on the title. Now all I have to do is find my exported file. Here's my file. This is the file I'll be using for this demo. I've named the file to represent the search that I looked at. Okay, it looks like the file's been read in, and now it's prompting me with the name of the subdivision and city. Now, this is a chance for me to make a change to the title. Whatever is left in these two boxes will be used on the titles and all the graphs. In this case, it makes perfectly good sense because this is the search that I did. But if I did a different search, here's where I can make a change to represent that search. Okay, it looks like the file's been read in, the data has all been analyzed, and all the graphs have been created. Now, once I select OK, notice that when we look at the program, it doesn't look that much differently. However, if you look down below here, you'll notice that we now have three tabs. These three tabs match up with the visual pricing system process. First step in the process is to understand the subject property. The second step is to understand what's going on in the subject properties area or neighborhood. And all that information is contained under this tab. When you select this tab, it will expand into other tabs with graphs that will show you neighborhood summary information. The third step is to price the property and the fourth step is to position it. By the way, if you look at the tutorial section, you'll notice that it's organized into the same categories as these tabs are. So let's look into each of these tabs. First of all, let's look at the Neighborhood Patterns tab. Once you select the tab, it expands into several other tabs. Each of these tabs represents a different graph. All of these graphs and the scripts that go with them are discussed in other tutorials. Let's look at the Pricing tab. Now when we open up the pricing tab, we notice that we see the MLS data sheet. This is a one-line description of all the data used to create these graphs. Since we do recommend that you export all status activity for the last two years, we can see all that data here. The pricing tab is where you create your scattergram and price line charts. We don't automatically create those charts for you because we recommend that you create those charts based on the subset of this data. When you do create your scattergram and price lines, you will see additional tabs that will be created in this section. Let's look at the positioning tab. Again, here we have several charts and graphs. 
As you can see here, we also have an active data form. This is similar to the MLS data form under the pricing tab, except in this case we only show properties that are for sale or properties that are under contract. As you recall, the positioning function is used to compare the subject property to other properties on the market. You can also create scattergrams for properties that are for sale here. Additionally, we have the real estate pond and we have the absorption rate sheet. So I hope you enjoyed this short overview of the visual pricing system. I'm sure you'll find this useful as you use the visual pricing system. For a more in-depth look at the charts and graphs that are included, please take a look at other visual pricing tutorials. Thank you.